QuickBooks Online 2024, Jobs, Subcustomers, and Projects. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting the business on target with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side within the favorites. We're right clicking on that balance sheet to open link in new tab. Right clicking on the profit and loss to open link in new tab. Right clicking on the trial balance to open a link in a new tab. Let's go to that tab to the right. Close up the hamburger and change that range. We're going from 010124 tab, 013124 tab. We will run it to refresh it, tab into the middle, repeating the process, closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010124 tab, 013124 tab, once again, refreshing the report, tab into the right, it's like an assembly line process here, once again, closing the hamburger, and changing the range, 010124 tab, 013124 tab, and we will run it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com to refresh it. Let's go back to the first tab. This time, we're gonna be taking a look at the concept of uh, sub-customers or jobs. We can also look at the projects. Now, I'm gonna give a little bit of history about these items because uh, they sometimes serve a similar purpose, although they have difference in their usage, and you might be able to use multiple of these items together, or it could be possible that newer features have taken over the older features. So usually these are types of things that will be used when you have a job cost type of system. When you have a job cost type of system, you typically want to be tracking things uh, by the project that you're on. A typical job cost system would be like a construction company type of thing. So if you have a construction company and you're dealing with accounts receivable is usually the balance sheet account we deal with with customers. We, we might have a particular customer, but instead of doing like a short job and then simply billing them when it's done, we have a longer uh, type of job and we have then the necess necessity to be tracking the information that's going to be assigned to that job and so on and so forth. Now, note, this can also be something that's common in service businesses as well. So even if like if you're a bookkeeper or if you look work at an accounting, a CPA firm or a law firm, they have similar types of things because, for example, a law firm, you can imagine they take on a project and it could be a project that they don't know how long it's going to take. And the legal system being what it is, it could be a long uh, project. And so you want to be tracking, you know, the costs of a particular project, possibly not simply by client, but by project. If you have certain clients, you can imagine certain big name legal issues these days. They probably have multiple cases <laughs> that are happening for one particular client at any given time, possibly, if you've got a big name uh, kind of client. So we need to track not only by client, but by job. So let's let's go back to the first tab. Now, the, the, the places where these are located is we have our customers, we recall, under the sales tab or what I would call like the customer center. And here are our customers. So we've got our customers here. Now, we could create what QuickBooks Online calls sub-customers, which, which would mean that we have a customer that's linked to or would be uh, subordinate to this customer, and, and we'll show how to do that shortly, noting that this sub-customer thing was basically pulled over from 
the old version, what used to be used as well on the desktop version, where they used to call them jobs. So notice that when we talk about accounting terminology, we might use these terms a little bit differently because, because when you're talking about jobs from a job cost census, a system like a percentage of completion system or something like that, then you're probably gonna just use the general term jobs. But if when you get into the QuickBooks world, then it gets a little bit more defined again because they used to be called jobs when they were in the desktop version. When they moved into the online version, now they call them subcustomers. So although we'll be using a job cost system when we're typically considering the use of subcustomers or projects, we don't really use the term job anymore for the actual location of the item because we would call them subcustomers if we used that method, or we can use the new tool, which oftentimes will take over a lot of the functionality that might have been done before with the subcustomers, which are the projects. So if projects are something that you need to be working on, if you have a job cost system, then that might be one reason that you need to kind of level up your account. You might not be able to go uh, too far below kind of the standard account. This is not in the advanced QuickBooks Online, but you, not, you might need the, the QuickBooks Online Plus or the standard version in order to get access to the projects. So the projects are similar to the sub customer, but it's the newer and most latest type of thing, which has a little bit more capacity to track things individually by the jobs because it has their own little home over here. However, the, the, the projects can be tied to the customers. So you, we still think of the projects as in essence being linked to the customers. So they're kind of like a more a powerful possibly version of the, what used to be the jobs, which are now called uh, the sub customers. However, you can also use these two things together. So you might say, well, if I have the projects, I would not use the jobs anymore. That might not be the case because for example, you might have one client that has multiple sub jobs and you might want like different billing addresses for the different jobs possibly. So in that case, you might still create a sub customer, which would be like the old job thing. Uh, and then you can assign a project to the sub customer which would still be linked to the ultimate customer, but have like a different billing address. So that's how you might layer these things. So the general rule uh, would be, well, on the sales tab, if you're thinking about a job cost type of system, then uh, you're probably, if you have the latest version of QuickBooks Online, you're probably thinking to use the projects because it's the latest and greatest thing possibly in conjunction with the jobs if you need to change like the billing address, which is now called sub customers. And if you have the older version of, or a, a, a lower version or tiered version of QuickBooks Online, you don't wanna pay for the upper version because you think you can do fine with just sub customers, then you can use just the, the sub customer functionality here and you won't have access to the projects and you can run similar types of reports like we used to do with the old uh, job functionality. Now we we're not going to go into a lot of detail in a job cost system here because that's a whole nother kind of specialty in and of itself. We'll just give some ideas of it. We have a no whole nother course or section that talks about the differences between sub customers, uh, jobs and, uh, and the projects and we've got courses on a job cost system and the reports typically run related to that noting that a job cost system has its own issues if you have extended jobs possibly having differences in revenue recognition principles because usually you recognize revenue at the end of the job but if you're if you have a long job then it might be justifiable to use like a percentage of completion method. That's a specialty field in, in and of itself. If you are a bookkeeper, you want to keep that in mind. You want to think, what industries do I want to be in? Do I want, it's nice to specialize in a job cost system because it's difficult. There's challenges to that. And, uh, and if you, a lot of other people can't do that. But, so the question is, do you want to take possibly some more difficult job jobs up and specialize in their, that area and bill more for them? Or possibly do you want to specialize elsewhere and not take on the job cost systems, possibly trying to take on more clients and automate them 
be a specialist in that way and and then automate your clients as best you can uh, and work that way. It depends on what your business model is. All right, so let's first set up a sub customer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend we're gonna set up a sub customer for the uh, Jones guitars here. So I'm gonna go back to the customers and do it do it up top. So I'm gonna say it's a new customer and we're just gonna say this is, I'm just gonna give it a number for the job. I'm gonna say it's a job, it's gonna be a 3005 for the sub customer. That's gonna be the display name. So this setup is ex exactly the same as we had for just a normal uh, customer, but then I'm gonna go down here and say it's gonna be a sub customer. So now it's gonna be a sub customer. I need then a parent customer and I'm gonna say the parent is gonna be Jones Guitars. So here we have that component where it says bill parent customer. So you can imagine in a law firm situation, you've got a high profile person. You've got, they're, they're getting in trouble all the time and you've got multiple jobs maybe for that one person, right? So then, so, so then you might then have different billing addresses as well. Uh, or you might bill that one person for the multiple jobs that we're gonna set up by number here, okay? That'd be the idea. So bill parent customer, and and uh, I won't go into that. Let's go in, so there it is. Let's go ahead and say save it, and boom. And so it went into it here, so we're now in it. It looks basically like a, a normal customer, but now we're tracking in the sub-customer. If I go back to the customers, noting that everything's kind of internal. I don't have to use the back tab up here. It's kind of in the the QuickBooks system. So if you find yourself going up here all the time to go back, it might work, but you probably it probably be more efficient if you use the internal functionality. All right, any case, we see the 3005 is now appearing down down here. So when Jones Guitars getting into, you know, what if, if it was a legal company and they're getting into trouble in a job cost system, I can then build the information to whatever particular problem that they're <laughs> that they're currently in, breaking it out uh, by by job. Let's do another one. Let's let's make let's make up one for Sam the Guitar Man. We're gonna hit the hit the new customer. I'm just gonna call the job 4002 and then scroll down and say it's going to be a sub customer and the parent customer is going to be sam the guitar man uh what happened sam the guitar k in the world paso my spanglish spanish english k in the world paso k paso k in the world paso a key a order let's save it sorry i've been practicing i don't get to practice lot so i have to do it while i work on the job we're going to go back to the customers here and then if i scroll down so now we have of course the sub customer for sam the guitar man now something to note here i just want to point out that quickbooks is is trying to pull a lot of the small to mid-sized businesses from desktop it looks like to me to online and and then just have the desktop version for the advanced users uh, that are paying the enterprise version of the desktop. So it might be the case that more people are moving online. Something you got to be careful of then is that when you're looking at the at the jobs, if you have a job system, it looks like this. It's going to roll in as sub customers generally is the general idea. But if you're moving from desktop to online, then it might be the case that you want to move from the sub customers to the to the projects because that would be that, that might be like a level up or a reason to to move into the online system you might think that the projects is going to be a better tool to use so you could have some conversions possibly between the uh, sub customers and the jobs so you want to make sure you do some research uh, on that conversion so that you do it as efficiently as possible don't just think that you're going to pull them in and then be able to use the projects if you have open jobs because you're going to want to make sure that you pull the jobs in to the, the projects. So you'll note up top here, it says we have this little item that says, do you organize sub customers as projects? You can convert the first level of sub customers into their own projects. So we're not talking sub customers of sub customers, the first level of sub customers. And those would be the ones that have the same billing address. Because if we convert from the sub customer to the project, then 
uh, then it's going to have to have the same billing address as the parent because now it's going to be the parent. Otherwise, otherwise you can't make a project of it because it has a separate address. And you, if that's the case, then that might be a reason why you still might use uh, the sub customers so you can make a project that basically ties out to it. So if you're thinking that you're going to import from QuickBooks desktop to online, it's likely that you might have to pull in these items as sub customers. And then when you want to make them into the projects to l use the cool new feature, which might be a, a thing that pull that, that drew you into it uh, to the move, then you might have to convert the sub customers, which it looks like they're getting better at uh, making that conversion an easier thing to do. Let's go over and look at the projects. So notice the projects by default were basically on when I went in here. Uh, if they're not on, you can go into the cog up top and you can go into the account and settings. And within the advanced area, you have your projects. So I'm advanced. We have the projects. They are turned on. If I click on it, you just have the toggle to toggle it on or off. So there is our projects once on, then do you want to leave without saving? Yes. Then you'll have your projects tab on the left-hand side. It says run your projects with confidence, make better decisions by knowing how your jobs are doing. You you can watch a video on it. Profitability in one place, profitability by job that is. Organize your project finances with a clear view of profits. Keep track of your uh, labor costs see where your team is spending time and how it affects your profit margins, eliminate the guesswork, understand which projects make money and where you should focus your efforts. All right, let's start the project. So then the project, I'm just going to call this one generic project number one. And then we have to notice there's an asterisk here. We have to assign it to a customer. So that's going to be mandatory of the projects. Now, if I had a customer that had a sub customer, I could assign it to the sub customer, which again, I might still do if there was a different like billing address or something, but I'm just going to assign this one to the parent customer so that we can do some comparing and contrasting of what the functionality looks like if we had a sub job or sub customer versus a project. So I'm going to select uh, Jones guitars. By the way, you might look at the term of projects and start thinking that you would like to break out certain things that you that like another income account, because what happens with the projects is basically we can we can run the income statement by project that we're working on is one of the one of the benefits that we'll basically have when we break out the projects. And we can also see it in its own little little place now. Uh, because now we have the projects with more functionality than we had with the sub customers. So you might think, well, what if I have a particular project in my business and I, and like, like I have a particular meeting or I go to a particular concert or something or particular, uh, I went to a, I went to a, a new, a new idea for my business. And then I applied that new idea and I want to see the revenue that was generated from that new idea or something like that. That's not really what the projects are for because you have to assign it to a customer. So all of the money has to be assigned to it. So it works kind of like the jobs. What might you use that functionality for? You might use class tracking for something like that. You might use the location tracking could possibly be used and the tags. Those are the other features that can break out the income statement by column. So, so you, so if you had a particular, uh, a particular, revenue location or something that you went to a conference and you applied some new thing and you want to see the the profit and loss that is tagged to that new thing or that tagged to a to a certain lead generator that you made or something like that and you can tag the revenue lines and the expense lines related to that particular lead or something well then that's something you might use class tracking or more likely like tags in that case which can still break out the income statement by that particular thing this thing is going to be breaking out the income statement by uh, the jobs, which have to be assigned to the customer. Okay, so in any case, let's let's bring this back. January 1st, uh, the end date, I'm not going to put an end date because I don't really know. And then typically when we think about the jobs, we have the, the status of it's either in progress, uh, it's completed, or it has been canceled. So in progress means... You know, we've started up, we've started up the job and it's, it's moving at this point in time. We're working on it completed, of course, means that the job is ended. So it's now closed. 
So it would kind of be like moving the job from the ones that we're working on to the ones that have been uh, closed and canceled means, you know, it was in progress. And then of course it has been uh, canceled. So let's go ahead and say, we're gonna say it's in progress. We can add notes if we need to. And then if I go into the job, here's our little thing to tell us about it. Your project at a glance, see your project's performance end to end, track income and all your costs, include, including labor. So it's gonna track everything, follow the money, see your project organized by income and costs to make sure you stay profitable. All right, and then see how time is being spent. Uh, you can add your team's time and know what they worked on and how it affects your project cost. So basically we've got basically the income and the costs which are now can be broken out by particular projects. So when I assign uh, invoices and whatnot, and uh, and expenses, I can assign them to a particular project. So for example, I won't record an invoice right now, but just to show you, if we hit the plus button, we've got the invoices over here, but you can also uh, do that here by, by, I'm in the project here, I'm gonna close up the hamburger, and in this dropdown, you can see I have the invoice, receive payment, expense, uh, estimate and so on and so forth. So this is another area that I can add an invoice, for example. So I'm gonna say, let's just do an invoice from here. And then if I was to invoice, this would be the revenue side of things. And then we have the assigning of the project because it's assigned to project number one. It's not assigned to the sub customer, it's assigned to the project. So, that, so if I close this back out and say leave without saving, I'm gonna say yes, leave without saving, that's that. And then if I had an expense side of things, money is going out, the money would still go out of the checking account, but now it's gonna go out of the checking account and I'm gonna assign it to a project. So I'm assigning it to a project over here. Why does that matter? Because when I assign it to the project, it'll still populate on the income statement like normal, but it'll also populate in here so I can see it each of these projects tracking uh, by the project. Now, also, it would be nice if I can break out my income statement by project, which would, so if I run my income statement report, if I was to run it, if you select uh, the drop down, we've got the uh, product and services, we've got, well, I'm sorry, here we've got the vendors or customers. So we can break out the basically the income statement in essence by customer which could include say the sub customers. So that's where the sub customers can come into play. Let's add another uh, tab. I'm gonna right click and duplicate a tab so we can look at possibly a project report. And then we're gonna go to the reports on the left-hand side, close up the hamburger and I'm gonna type in project. So we have a project profitability summary report. Nothing's currently in it at this point in time, but there you have it. Now notice the when you think about the projects, notice that when you're looking at one individual project, it's great to be going in here and being able to see what is happening within a particular project and run reports for that particular project. However, it's often the case that you, that you will want to run a report for a job cost system that has all of the projects, right? That are, that are, that are currently in play and so that's why you might, it'd be, it's nice to be able to, to run a report that's gonna have basically all the projects that should tie into basically your income statement when you're trying to do like your financial reporting. So, so the thing that, if I go back on over here, the thing that this report does great is it gives you more of an, an isolated view on each individual project in its own little, its own little space here. But when you do external reporting and uh, then and financial statement creation, then you're, you still want, might want to be running reports, which is gonna be breaking out basically all of your projects. Again, we'll get into that in more detail uh, in, in future courses or sections on, that are focused more on projects and job cost systems in particular. Okay, so we have the overview. So on the overview, we've got the income and the expenses. We've got the invoices the expenses, bills, and hours that we can have. These are the transactions by the project, the time activity, and the, pro the project reports for the particular project. And then you've got the attachments 
that we can add. We have the drop down up top. So it says not started, completed, or uh, canceled. So we can so change the, uh, the status of the project. We can go back to the all projects up top and that takes us to our home page, which will typically go in if I open the hamburger whenever we directly go into the projects. And so now the home page has the status drop down. So if I go to all status or if I went to canceled, there's nothing in it. The only thing in it right now is the in progress. And then we have customers. We only have the one customers. So we could sort by customers if we so choose. And then the employee rates so the hourly cost and the payroll expenses and then we can go into the particular project as we were before going into the project and now we're inside that particular project let's just do one more i'm going to go back to the projects so we can just see two projects in here and mirror them to the sub customers so i'm going to say new project up top and i'm going to say this is going to be i'm just going to call it uh, project two project two and then i'm going to link it to this is an asterisk field i have to have it to sam the guitar man not to the sub customer but i just want to compare and contrast the differences between a project and a sub customer so we're going to say there it is and i'm going to say the start date is in the beginning of january again and it is once again in progress so we're going to go ahead and save it and so there it is now it opens up and now we're inside the project i'm going to go back to the all projects so now when we go into this field we see our two projects and we can go in there individually so if i open up my hamburger note that although these projects are tied to customers as you can see they have their own area outside of the customer uh, center which if i go to the, to the customer center is in the sales area so if i go to the sales area and then customers you can see we basically tied a project to Jones and Sam the Guitar Man. Uh, and, and that can be found separately in you know the projects area over there. And then these two are the sub customers. So that's going to be, but when we get into the billing of the projects, it's going to be billed to the uh, Jones, it's going to, you know, the, the, the project one to Jones Guitars and project two to uh, Sam the Guitar Man. So that's the general idea. We'll do some, a little bit of uh, billing to the particular projects. We'll play with some time and look a little bit at the differences between the sub customers and the projects. But again, we get into it in a lot more detail in uh, future courses and sections that specialize in a job cost type of system. The main thing I just wanna point out with these is make sure if you're working in this area, the first thing you gotta get down is kind of the terminology, a job cost system, is going to use the term jobs but they could use jobs to refer to the quickbooks tool that we're using which could have been the old jobs in the desktop version which are now called sub customers in the new version and the sub customers the coolest newest thing is to convert the sub customers generally to the to the projects so the projects are basically kind of like the jobs uh now that now have their own kind of place within the within quickbooks their own portal within quickbooks that's kind of like the general overview now there's nothing happened to the reports we haven't entered anything new so the trial balance is still standing we're still standing on those same two legs we haven't even moved we're just standing still here just hanging out listen to your babble just standing there watching your babble so there it is